Hello everyone. So we are going to start our ship tour of the Norwegian Bliss. And we always start our ship tours in the atrium. So we are on deck six in the atrium. And it's quite crowded right now. I know I normally do these when it's less crowded, but you know. She slept it, late. It happened. She needed to, it's okay. Yeah, so let's take a look at the atrium first. How large the atrium is. Lots and lots of seating. We've actually never had trouble getting a seat when we wanted to over here. Oh, there's Kenny and Janice. Nice big atrium bar. To the back over there by the windows is the internet cafe. Then coming around, there is an actual Starbucks in here. And for those of you that are are curious yes you can use your Starbucks gift cards and other cards in this Starbucks here's the cruise next desk where you can buy future cruise credits and then of course we have guest services and shore excursions very nice very big atrium one really cool feature of this atrium is this giant two-story screen and they show movies here and then like what they're doing right now where they're having a demonstration they show it up on the big screen and then when you're upstairs in the local you can look down as well okay by the elevators are these screens that will show you what deck you're on you are here yes which is here right now at the moment mm -hmm. A floor plan of the deck you're on and then what is all on the ship and what deck you can course, find it on and it highlights it a little darker here shade of blue which one you're on so this ship does has two banks of elevators at the board of the ship and the aft of the ship there are no midship elevators but there are eight elevators forward eight elevators aft. they are big they still will get crowded, but they do have a, a high capacity. I think we can fit about 20 people on an elevator. Yeah, biggest elevators we've ever been on a cruise ship. And they're nice, but they do get packed. They can get, when you these are big ships and there's a lot of people on There's them. over 4,000 people on this ship. So you expect your elevators to be crowded. Just have a little patience. The elevator rides have their own adventures. They sure do. That's for sure. <laughs> Okay, still on deck six. The atrium is midship. We walk to the forward of the ship on deck six. On that side, there's nothing but bathrooms. You have your stairs here. Jason is gonna show you the beautiful staircases. <laughs> and then on this side is Q, which is the, t I'm sorry the Texas Smokehouse. So let's go check this out. You already see the Texas decor going on in here. So this is the Texas Barbecue Restaurant but it also does some double duty in here. So you see, it's got a very minimal decor. It's not real, it doesn't scream Texas barbecue in here. This area acts as a small second theater. As you'll see the stage up front. Yeah. So they do have live country music several nights during the week on this stage, but this room also holds um, the happy hour prohibition the musical it holds escape the big top and some other shows so maybe that's why they did a minimalist decor in here because it does act as a double duty yeah, area that makes sense because they you've, you've got it set up for something right now you can see chairs set up the tables are pushed against the wall yeah. so on sea days this is definitely used for more than than just the texas barbecue restaurant yeah okay leaving q Turn right here and come down this corridor, and here's the library. It's a nice library. Lots of books, lots of board games. Very quiet and tucked away. Mm -hmm. You know, nestled back here where it's really quiet, so you can uh, be at peace and solitude. Yeah, so if you're looking to get away from crowds, this right. is a good, way, good place to do it. And it connects back into the atrium. Right. 
so you keep walking. There are some meeting rooms back here, so if you're doing a cruise with a group and you need meeting space, this is where it would be. Oh, that I haven't even seen that. We haven't even seen that, but we saw it yesterday, you guys. It was so beautiful. Day before yesterday. Our day before we saw it yes the day before yesterday. Yeah. And, and with our own eyes. Like. But to hear the sounds and watch it crumble as it cracks and falls mm -hmm. into the water, that is amazing. It really is. But then yeah, you walk out here back into the atrium. And there is a photography studio tucked over here in the corner. So if you're looking to do some professional photo uh, photographs with your family, here's the photo studio. So back in the atrium, here is a good view of the atrium bar. I like the setup of this bar that it's big and round and it's easy to get to. And then you come down this way, look to your right and you're gonna see these screens. See shore excursions, show reservations, dining reservations. So these are touch screens. See, so you could choose dining, and then there's all of the restaurants available. You can look at menus, you can make reservations, you can map how to get to it. Very, very helpful. The app does some of these things as well, but if you don't have a smartphone, you can use these touch screens. Oh yeah, and you can change the languages. And it tells you the time. These are very, very cool, very helpful. Okay, walking down on deck six. We're gonna come. This is the this is true midship right here. And you're in the midst of the art gallery. So here's the actual office for the art gallery, but you're gonna see art all up around the walls. Over here. And some strawberries. I love that. Yeah, because who doesn't need that hanging in their house? That was pretty much me and Elisa this whole cruise. <laughs> dancing strawberries. Just a couple of little strawberries just dancing around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here is the social. So this is the comedy and nightclub. Oh, they've got it set for an art auction right now, so we're not gonna go in. But this is the comedy club as well. Yeah. So see, there's seating all along the edge. There's a lot of seating in here, and then the com the comedians will be up on stage. But it is set up for an art auction at the moment. Okay, and on the other side is Coco's, which is a little chocolate bakery, I guess you'd call it. You can you can buy chocolates in here and other pastries, and they also have a crepe station. But man, everything in that case looks amazingly delicious. And they're not open right now, so some things are closed. But look at these mugs. So you can come in here and get these amazing giant milkshakes. Look at those mugs covered chocolate in chocolate. All over oh the my gosh. Oh my goodness. And here's your crepe station. Oh yes. Now that's an official crepe station. Yeah. They make good crepes here. And then next to Coco's is teppanyaki. The so teppanyaki is the Japanese hibachi. But you can see it's set up. Lots of seating in here. Did not try this, but heard it is very, very good. And look at that amazing view. And then there's more setup on this side. So lots of seating and availability in here. Yeah, bigger than I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, continuing down deck six, you can see we're in the in the midst of the art gallery. Art is on the right and left of us, where we are heading straight for Mix Bar. Then you have the two main dining rooms, taste on one side and savor on the other. The cool thing about these main dining rooms is you don't have a set dining room and you don't have a set dining time. So if you want to eat and taste one night, you just come in, say I need a table for however many, and they will seat you. Same with Saver, same with the Manhattan room. So all of the main dining rooms are open seating, available at any time.
And here are the aft elevators. Yeah, you see there's four on the right, four on the left, stairs ahead. And then you've got and stairs the on either side. The coolest seat of all. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that did not go like you thought it would. Ouch. But at the end of the corridor, there are bathrooms, men's on one side, and ladies on the other. Okay, so we're taking a slight detour. We were on deck six. We came down one to deck five to show you where the kids' clubs are. So from the aft of the ship, either take the elevator or the stairs down, and the kids' clubs are right here. Okay, so from the bank of elevators, if you come right out here is Entourage, which is the teen lounge. Entourage is ages 13 to 17. Okay, no one's currently in, so we're just going to give a quick peek in here of what the teen club has to offer. So our kids have spent a lot of time in here. We've got foosball over in the corner, comfortable seating through here. We've got a dance floor in the back. Gaming stations against the wall. Just a really cool hangout area. And this is ages 13 to 17. Okay, on the other side of the elevators is the video arcade. So they keep all the kids down here. Let's take a walk through the video arcade, honey. All kids on deck five. <laughs> video arcade down the hall on deck five is splash academy so this is the kids club and they've got it separated by ages but you'll see it's a real fun playful area through here we're not going to be able to walk in through the kids clubs because there are kids in there and here is the area to the kids club And lastly, the little bitty ones are called guppies. So this is the area still on deck five for the little bitty kids. So ages for that guppies is six months to less than three years. From three years to 12, they go to Splash Academy. 13 to 17 is Entourage. So we're now forward on deck seven and here's where the big theater is. So right by the stairs, you can see the entrance to the theater on the right and the left. They do have bathrooms on both sides. They're playing bingo in here right now. You don't need to fill them up as long as you keep one half of the Quakers uh, ruffle. So you can see how large the theater is. So also during this people game, we're going to give away a quiz for two. So please make sure that you're here and present. And I just want to add that this theater has the best seating. So, you know, you're not looking directly into the guy's head in front of you. It has the best sound of any theater so far. Mm -hmm. Really nice theater. And we saw Jersey Boys. Jersey Boys is amazing. Oh. Just the best show we've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, it's five out of five stars as far as I'm concerned. It was great. Super entertaining. Yeah, uh, absolutely fantastic. Sitting on the edge of your seat the whole time. It was awesome. Okay, the heart of Deck 7 is the local. So, we have seating around the banister that overlooks the atrium and the big screen and whatever's going on down there. On the right side, you have a pub style dining room. And then of course, there is a full functioning bar that is open 24 seven. More seating over here. Just remember if it is meal time, you need to be seated. Don't just grab a chair.
But you can see the open expanse of seating. Oh, look! There's Jason. <laughs> and then continuing through the local, there is a small arcade back here. And something super cool is the bowling alley. Which is being maintenance right now, but this is so much fun. Come back here, have a little friendly competition with your friends. And as of today, a price for bowling is $6.18 per game. Past the local is the beginning of the casino. This casino does have smoking and non-smoking sections. And as I walk through here, I am not smelling cigarette smoke. And you can smell the difference. Yes. So lots of slots, lots of table games. And see, so you'll see the closed off rooms back there. Playing craps over here. And the slots just keep on going. It's a pretty big casino. Look. Wish you luck. And then see this enclosed area here is the smoking part of the casino. And you also have the Skyline Bar. And let me tell you, I love those screens back there. Just look how beautiful that is. So they're bringing a little piece of nature into a casino, which is not something you would typically see in an area like this. I really like it. Okay, so at the very back of deck seven is the Manhattan Room. And the Manhattan Room is the third of the main dining restaurants. It is only open for dinner. And this one does have a slight dress code. So you do have to wear pants, slacks, collared shirts, dresses, etc. No shorts t-shirts in here. And this is the largest of the three dining rooms. There's a stage back here also. They can have live music. And look at that view. My favorite view on the ship. So we are now up on deck eight. We're starting aft because we just took the aft stairs up and back here in the back are two restaurants which is Los Lobos, Mexican and Cagney Steakhouse. In the center is the A-list bar and to the left we have Los Lobos. These are only open for dinner. They don't have all of the tables set yet for dinner service but these back here are. But you can tell by the carpet, the coloring, that this is a Mexican themed restaurant. Favorite piece of artwork. And again, you have the views. On the other side is Cagney's Steakhouse. So Cagney's is the signature restaurant of Norwegian. You will find a Cagney's on every Norwegian cruise ship. Okay, 
still on deck eight. We are getting into the shops. And we're having some crazy sale going on right now. But you have the sandbar over here has a little bit of everything, some clothing, your liquor, uh, your bliss memorabilia, all in here. And then we have the photo store where you can buy your photos, cameras, binoculars, etc. And then, of course, there's the jewelry. So the jewelry starts here in the middle. Huge jewelry store back there. Huge, huge, huge jewelry. And then, of course, the jewelry is going to go all down the middle as well. This is the walkway we were just on coming down with the jewelry on both sides. And then the Tides Boutique is over here. So this is where you're going to get your purses, fancy sunglasses, etc., which leads into the jewelry. And then this is a more specialty shop here. Early in the cruise, they had all Alaskan gear in here. See, it's called Alaska Supply Company, but they have transitioned it because they're about to go to the Mexican Riviera. Look at this gorgeous centerpiece. It spans decks eight, seven, and six. Okay, now we're getting into the bar and restaurant area of Deck 8. This is the Sugarcane Mojito Bar. They will have the future live entertainment here a lot. Yes, always all in the evenings have live music here. Nice, comfortable seating. Big, expansive bar. And of course, yes, waterfront access here. And there, the mojito is the specialty. Across from the Sugar Cane Mojito Bar is Ocean Blue. This is the seafood specialty dining restaurant. Seagull lights. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, the lights are shaped like seagulls. This is definitely a smaller venue and it does book up very quickly. It was sold out when we got on the ship. No chance at all of getting a reservation here. Love these big round banquettes if you have a large group. Love, love, love this artwork coming through here. This is on, we're still on deck eight, going into the Maltings Whiskey Bar area. So all of this is the Maltings Whiskey Bar. And then tucked away in the corner over here is the Humidor Cigar Lounge. And don't worry if you forgot to bring your own cigars, they have them available for purchase. And they do not allow cigarette smoking in here. It is cigars only. I guess no one's feeling cigarish this morning. Okay, right next to Maltings is the Cavern Club, and they have a Beatles band that plays here almost nightly. This is also pretty much the main karaoke bar, and you'll see the theming. This is a recreation of the, the original Cavern Club in Liverpool, down to these kind of details here. And this is on the Zodiacs. Also in the same area, we have the Cellars Wine Bar. And there is quite an expansive um, wine list in here. And they do special wine tastings as well. But look at all these bottles. I mean, there is so much wine in here. Any mini mining bottle. in here as well. Okay, nestled next to the wine bar is La Cucina, which is the Italian restaurant. And they are having a wine tasting in here right now. Okay. 
We're now forward on deck eight. When you come all the way forward to the elevators and stairs, you have options to your right and your left. If you go right, it is Food Republic. Food Republic is Asian fusion, so you're gonna get sushi, other edibles in here. We have eaten here, it was fantastic. There's even skewers and little Mexican corn thrown in. So kind of a little bit of everything. It makes for a good fun uh, dining experience, but you can, you can just hit start ordering right here. And you got handhelds, and then uh, you can you can it's all touch screen. You can pick from the handhelds, the sushi bar, all the sushis. You click on it, and it kind of tells you, uh, gives you a nice description of what it is and picture, um, and so on and so forth. Everything down from cocktails to the red wines to beers. Yeah, so this is a fun experience. I highly mm -hmm. recommend it. We had a blast. Yeah. And the food was really good. Yeah, and the staff was very friendly and um, took care of us. Okay, on the opposite side from Food Republic is the District Brew House. And you will be welcomed by Legendary Spirit here. But look at this cool artwork. That is all spent shells. All bullet casings. And then this one is like gold nuggets. And then more of the shells. Look at the tabs. Did, all, did you see all the tabs? This is a beer room. This is where you get your beer on. So one thing that's super cool about deck eight is the waterfront. So when you come outside, this goes almost all the way around the ship. So it doesn't go all the way forward, but it does go all the way aft. So there is seating from the different restaurants outside, then there's casual seating, there's like a gelato window, there's bars out here. So let's take a look around the waterfront. Let's do it. All right, so coming through the waterfront, see this is the exterior seating for La Cucina. And then so you can sit out here and have dinner when the weather is nice with this view. Absolutely stunning, beautiful view. Basically everything that we just showed you. Um, the whiskey bar, the cavern club, Lucatina, all those restaurants on deck eight are those have waterfront access. And um, some of them have a bar and some of them don't, but uh, most of them have seating, comfortable couches and stuff. You can come out here and just a different viewpoint on the ship. Mm -hmm. So here is um, the exterior sugarcane mojito bar. It's still morning time, so the bars are not hopping just yet, but they will be this evening. So you'll see access points all over these glass doors to get you in and out of the waterfront. Oh, to just open the doors, all you gotta do. These are fantastic. Just come grab you a comfortable seat out here, feel the sea breeze, and relax. Also, uh, if you see some, got some ships or something, or you want to look at the land, you have some binoculars here on, uh, on this deck. You can look out there, and I can see a big old huge cargo ship, so I got a better viewpoint from here. Pretty cool. And you'll see the, the comfortable seating just goes on and on and on. Okay, as you get to the back of the ship, you'll see outdoor dining for Cagney's. So each of the restaurants does have this nice outdoor dining area for when the weather is beautiful. There's your access point. Mm-hmm. To get, yes. But we're coming upon my favorite part of the waterfront. Excuse us. Hello. So this, this is uh, 
This is a great photo op for selfies. Come back here, it's usually very, very quiet. It's nice and roomy, it's just a nice place to uh, catch some beautiful views. See, there's nobody back here. 4,000 people on the ship, nobody back here. And you get this. Uh, my favorite, favorite view on the ship. But what's really cool back here is this. So you're, you can not only, you can stand. Well, you're technically standing above the back of the ship. But when you stand at this angle right here. Kind of gives you vertigo. Does it? <laughs> this is just gorgeous. The sound is amazing. This is my favorite spot on any cruise ship. Seeing that tail that the ship is making, or the wake, I will always call it a tail. I know that's not a technical term, but that's what I call it. Just standing here, listening to the water churning, seeing that, smelling the, the cold, clean air, because we are in Alaska. <sighs> yep. It's fantastic. Back there, that's our past. It's gorgeous. <laughs> And then you see it wraps around because we have turned a corner and we are still walking and you'll see the sun is out on this side where it was very shady on the other side of the ship the sun is out over here and here's the exterior seating for Los Lobos and then you can just walk down the side of the ship with this stunning view you know, depending on what time of day it is you're gonna get one side that gets sun and then one side that's like Arctic freezing, especially yes. when you're in Alaska. In, in Alaska, <laughs> but uh, this side is the warm side. This is the warm side. Right now. So you see the seating has changed. We've got like a little uh, cute cafe, and it's because we're coming a around to the bake shop. So not open at the moment, but this is a window right here where you can get your gelato. This is also a full bake shop that you can also access from the inside. More of this fantastic seating. Hello. Hi. And more of the binoculars. And you see the seating has changed yet again because this is the outdoor seating for Ocean Blue, which is the seafood restaurant. So there's theming for each of the seating areas. Okay, so here is the exterior entrance of the Humidor. Cigar lounge and the Cavern Club. This is usually a pretty happening bar. And they do have sports on out here. So if you're traveling during sports season, and maybe catch a game. And a little note, because this is an English venue, Liverpool, British, whatever you wanna call it, it's usually soccer or football as they call it, not American football that's playing on these TV screens. And then we've come to the other end of the waterfront. We've walked all the way around the exterior of the ship and you come back in right here at Food Republic. Decks 9 through 15 are all uh, cabins, but on the front of deck 15 is the observation lounge. So the observation lounge has this nice comfortable seating that wraps around the front with floor to ceiling windows. And then it also has drink stations and light food. So they'll have a light breakfast, a light lunch, not as expansive as they do during up at Garden Cafe. But you'll see in here, they're just setting up for lunch. So you've got some salad, I mean some meats and cheeses, sandwiches, to make you a salad. And then they have a dessert over here. And then for dessert, see there's just a variety of cakes. There's a cheesecake, pound cakes, got some pudding, fruit, and jello. See, there's seating on the back wall here. 
and then of course seats that are facing the windows. There is a big full bar in here. Lots of seating, so there's like tables and chairs here in the center. And of course you've still got couches, chairs, etc. along the side. And then of course the best part is right here. This is the front of the observation lounge. Two story floor to ceiling windows with a complete panoramic view. This area was packed the day we were at the glaciers. And then up top, you can see seating for Garden Cafe. They do have a piano player that plays most evenings in here. And then what you just saw on that side wraps around this side as well. Okay, so here in the very, very center is a big drink station, water, tea, and more salad over here. You could come to the observation that you never leave. You really could. Everything you need is here. Right here on this side. Probably my, one of my favorites. With the best views. Okay, so we're now up on deck 16. Deck 16 and above is going to be kind of a, the daytime life of the party. So you've got your garden cafe um, buffet up here, your pool, all of your external activities. Let's take a look. bar so you've got hot dogs hamburgers all the fixings potato salad coleslaw this is good Ooh, whole bar pizza bread station at the table Very nice big salad bar here. There is a soup station, and there's different soups every day. So today is a pasta fagouli and minestrone soups. Lots of fresh fruit and desserts. And the desserts are individually cut. And then there's also ice cream. More desserts over here. Huge dessert station. So you see, there's dessert, 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 dessert. Then over here, there's always going to be a carving. We've got chicken today. These little fresh paninis are always good. at lunch they always have these little pre-made sandwiches so look that's like chicken salad and a croissant egg salad and then things like potato salad and chips to go with your salads and sandwiches the asian favorites always has a line as the noodle soup is custom made for you and there is a hot and spicy noodle soup or a uh, milder soup but Garden Cafe has got a ton of seating it's literally the entire forward area of deck 16 multiple drink stations multiple salad bars multiple hot areas it just goes and goes and goes 
This is our favorite place to sit back here because you've got those expansive views. And in the very, very back is a full service bar. If you walk outside on deck 16, right outside of Garden Cafe, you can get your plate of food and bring it out here. And then of course we come to the pool deck. But a very large pool deck, lots of chairs, lots of loungers, gorgeous pool. Yeah, that is a nice Absolutely place. gorgeous. A big pool, too. Yeah. It's a big pool. I like how you can kind of sit in the shower over here. Yeah. Stay cool. Without completely submerging. Yep. And then we have, on this side of the pool, we have Waves Bar. Here. Of course, have the big screen. They do show uh, movies out here, other things. And we have a stage for either a DJ or a live band. But it's a very nice pool deck. It's very open, very inviting. Of course, if you're in Alaska, you won't use it that much. But if you're cruising somewhere else, you'll enjoy it. I like and, that they have a live band out by the pool, you know? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Something other than just a... A DJ or a guitar player. And then here is the family pool. So the big pool does have an adults only sign on it, but the kids are allowed in this pool. So this is the family pool. Then we have a kids splash zone over here. That's very cool. And two pretty awesome water slides. Okay, so this one right here is a tube slide. And you can see up there, it looks like somebody's about to tube it. So you climb the stairs, get in your tube, and it's a pretty long ride. And then on this side is the drop slide, which we'll get a better view of when we go up to deck 17. Yeah, I saw that. Those giant leaf things will create shade. So yeah, really nice pool area, and it's a beautiful day today, so people are enjoying it. So all of the middle of deck 16 is pool deck. So you've, you've seen everything there, but we're gonna walk to the back now, and this is where the spa and the fitness center is. All right, so this is the Pulse Fitness Center. Um, <clears throat> it's open from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. It has a nice selection of weights. Um, you got your hammer strength equipment all the way down. You have your free weights equipment right here uh, and you actually have a smith machine right here uh, which that's the first time i've ever seen one of those on a cruise ship so that's always really cool got some pulley system here you got interchangeable um, pieces of equipment here you can use for different things these are all the things it will do so there's lots of uh, variations in how you can uh, adjust this equipment for upper body and lower body lots of ellipticals lots of treadmills with a view and it just goes on and on and on it's really 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 good and on the other side across from the Pulse Fitness Center is the Mandara Spa. Mm -hmm. See, there's a barber shop in here. So guys, you can come get a haircut or a shave. And then see there's, for the ladies, get your hair done, get your nails done. And then, of course, there's treatment rooms, etc. And then back there is the thermal suite access. Okay, so we're at the very back of the ship now on deck 17. This is Spice H2O. 
And so this is another adults only area. Jason needs his sunglasses. <laughs> I lost my sunglasses. <laughs> but check this out. So we've got a stage up here. You see all the lights. This is where they have outdoor parties. Lots of lounger seating. Hot tub over there. Another hot tub on this side. Full bar here and smokers. This is the smoking area. If it rains, uh, you can smoke underneath this. If it doesn't, uh, you gotta smoke. If it's not raining, you gotta smoke over there in the corner. Also over here you have, a, and it's not a pool, but it's a little area you're, you can lay out in. in. You can lay out in. When you get hot, you can just kind of cool off under the showers. Pretty neat little area to cool off in when you're getting baked by the sun. Yeah, beautiful water area back here. Obviously this has not been used on our Alaskan cruise. But if you are in warm climates, this would be a really great place to, to cool off. Yep. All right, here is Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville at Sea on deck 17. There's two entrances. There's here or the front side. The kitchen is right here. Hello. And this is the chill bar. And that's the best bartender on the ship. <laughs> But this is an extra cost restaurant. It's $14.95 for the um, entrees here per person. Love these chairs here. Hands up. Hands up, people. And I love these tables too. They look like a little sailor table. Hey, La Bistro is also up on deck 17. This is the second restaurant on the ship that does have a dress code. This is French dining. And the dress code's minor, just no shorts, t shirts, you know, wear slacks, a collared oh, shirt. Be, they're feeling froggy, like, you know, because when you're on a cruise, this just isn't big enough. Oh, you need that, you need okay. that big giant magnum of champagne? This is not a bottle of champagne. <laughs> This is a bottle of champagne. <laughs> so we can attest that La Bistro is fantastic. It's the best meal we've had on this ship. It was the best meal we had on the breakaway. If you have a specialty dining package, make a reservation for La Bistro. You will not be sorry. The food is amazing. Okay, on deck 17 is also the entrance to Ocean Loops. This is the drop slide. So here's the entrance. You climb the spiral staircase. You go to the platform and you drop here and then you loop out on the side of the ship. This, this slide does hang over the side of the ship. We have no brave parties to demonstrate for us at the moment. Hey, deck 17 is also the jogging track. Just follow the jogging track. It loops around. It goes all the way around deck 17 with a pretty stunning view for jogging. You've got another view here of the Aqua Racer. Is this called the Aqua Racer? Yeah. This is the Aqua Racer and this is the entrance for this one as well. Right, we do have some kids. The stairs you go. Yep. You carry your tube up. You spin your way all the way from the top to the bottom. And Priest to death. <laughs> okay, last but not least on the back of the ship is the racetrack. So we're gonna climb up to the next deck and check that out.
we are up on deck 19 now and up here we have hot tub and we have Vi Beach Club. So Vi Beach Club was not opened up this week because nobody's gonna use a beach club in the cold. And this is the first time I've actually seen this bar open. But during warm weather cruises it will be. And a very nice sun deck. So this side is included at no cost. If you wanna go inside Vi Beach Club, there is an additional cost for that. but really nice views up here. Okay, so the last thing that we're gonna show you is on deck 20, which is laser tag. Yeah. You getting tired of the ship yet? It's that big. It's huge. We <laughs> I think I need a beer. <laughs> We've literally been walking around for about two hours making this ship tour. That just tells you how big this ship really is. And how thorough we are. Yes, it does. <laughs> all right, so you get up here and all of deck 20 is nothing but laser tag. It just sits up here all on its own. <laughs> and this is so much fun. Oh. It really is a good time. So like you'll see all the different areas. So one team starts on this end and one team starts on this end and you fight or compete all the way through. So if you get killed, this is where you, come you have yourself. to come here Reset, reload, and then you can keep track of how many kills you've got and how many times you've been killed. Yep. Very cool. So, looks like they're not using it. So, we're just going to do a quick little walkthrough, show you what it looks like. Oh, look at this. So, you're going to be here, right, with the gun, and you're going to go in. You're not going to be shooting at you left and right. you got you to gotta get on and then when you gotta make sure that you're reloading and make sure you don't get shot. If you do get killed, you gotta go out front and uh, re up. Or what do they call it? Uh, respawn. Yeah. If you get you have killed, to respawn. You go back and get re and respawn. Gamers know these things. We're not gamers. Can you tell? But look, this this area is so cool. So it's a very lots of places to hide, lots of places to get behind. So you can come and may help your team win so these windows are fun so you can kind of get behind the windows look around the windows and it goes day and night so laser tag is open day and night so you can do it twice you can do a daytime experience and then at night see let me show you these lights see they have all these lights for nighttime so at night you have a flashlight and you have those lights to guide your way. Because our boys did it, Entourage, the teen club, uh, came up here one night and played, and they said it was a lot of fun doing it at night. We've never done it at night, but they said it's a lot of fun at night. 